we have from God and God who has well, we start off on our conversation of the day today. Financial literacy is our conversation and we're really looking at how you've been handling money. Think about how you first spent your first salary or income and how that has been going up until now. Would you say that you're financial literate or financially literate? Well, that is a question we'll be answering today as we also understand better how to handle money. And you'll be surprised that uh, perhaps your definition of handling money wisely is not really the case because, as they say, your money should always work for you. But hey, remember our question of the day to you is, do you remember what you did with your first salary or income? What did you spend it on? Let's start from there. Let's start from the basics. How and what did you spend your money on when you first got that salary or income? Talk to us. That hashtag is new normal and it's interesting. You are already talking to us. Um, Molly Muchachil, of course, already said his first salary went to peanuts. <laughs> That's what he actually bought when he got his first income. St. Thomas Ben says, my first salary as a bachelor, I gave Caesar what belongs to Caesar and God what belongs to God. Bless you, Ben. Then another here, Sam Nyauma says, I saved 70% of it for six months and built my parents a home after we lost our former home to the 2007 skirmishes for two years. They were living in a two-roomed rental house. God is good. Sam, wow, well done. Binzu Castro says, I bought a church glass pulpit the whole, with a whole salary. I work as an electrician at Tiles and Carpet in my whole 30 thousand salary i bought that to the church it was not easy for me wow that's some sort of dedication evelyn says hmm it was an accumulated salary so i bought myself my first sofa set i didn't sleep that night i kept on switching on the lights <laughs> and then burying them the entire night couldn't believe i owned them if i hear you loud and clear peter scratch says I had some much, I had a lot of debt and even in my second salary could not pay that completely. So what I recall, I paid debt of a belt I borrowed and never returned back and shoes were also, also were from borrowing. So he paid off that too. All right, Peter, thank you for sharing. And remember that hashtag is a new normal even as we remember how we first handled that income or salary we got when we started off. And uh, to help us with this conversation because we need to have people help us walk this talk is Esther Moneki, who is a CEO and founder, Lapid Leaders Africa. Thank you for your time. Also joining us in the other studio, Robert Ocheng, who is the CEO and co-founder Abojani Investment. And we are also joined by Rosalind Wanjiro, who is an entrepreneur. And joining us virtually, we have Dennis Karaba, who is a project manager at BNL Management Limited. Thank you all for making time this morning. Now, even as we talk about how you spent your first salary or income, <clears throat> Excuse me, Brian Moshiri and uh, Mad, uh, Marvin Lukulu sat down to just reminisce how they spent their first salary. Here's their story. Thank you very much for joining me on your voice today. It's it's a a to how we all spent our first salaries, and everyone has a wicked story. So do you, so do I. Story uh, Akuinakaaji, how was it? First salary, a big salary in Shaipata, aside from Zile Zaktambo. When I got my first salary, I was like, I'm going to buy it. So I to the most expensive phone I can buy with, like, uh, with the amounts that I have. I got to buy it back in 2013. And how much did it was good. I think 30 pia. Mm. It was 30 Gs. So when I was paid, I got to pay it in my account. I got to buy it in my phone. I got I think it was uh, the new phones in Metokia that year. Very, very fresh to the market. Mimi ni kwa hivyo. Being there among the first ones in, in, in the market kukua nazo. In the country kuzibai. So, yeah. Na sahi, okay, so fast forward, mavo at least asa me, amejua financial literacy. Una do nini, what do you do na? Pesa. Yes, so meshikashika pesa at least kidogo, kidogo. Una do nini na sasa? I, I budget properly, I, I know. I have to spend this a certain amount on food, on clothing. I can plan this, like uh, I'll buy new clothes after like four or five months. I don't buy every time that I receive my, my salary. I just go and buy clothes. I can, uh, I serve through 
sako i joined the sako joined the sako so i said through a sako i mean several chamas that are just friends mm. yeah here and there money markets money markets, money markets. I, I plan to join that to the Yelewa Vizuri, mm. but uh, I am doing some research on HP and on and on and some, something interesting and it's good for growth. Mtuka mimi ni kiangalia penye ni metoka, kuna time flani, kuzi nilikuwa kwa space ya kuvoice, ma voice over. So ni meanza nile, ni meanza kupata pesa kidogo, alafu sasa ni kapata project moja kubwa. Eh, zile kubwa, sasa ilikuwa. Lakini sasa you are fast, you have pesa kidogo. <laughs> Your first. Hizo <laughs> pesa kidogo mimi naweza sema ziko na drama more because ni ile yenye unapata sijui 5000 mahali mbio mbio 5000 unaenda mimi na kuga mtu wa buying and spending spree yani ile yenye hata hujapangia kitu you know nikitoka hapa hivi nje naona kiatu na kum ah huo huo hoka anaita 500 na mimi niko na 5000 ai naweza afford nipe mbili hii kwanza niko na long flani nitaka nayo una cheki so ile moja yenye naweza sema ilikuwa sasa like a big chunk ilikuwa project flani ni voice uh, ya popular brand around na wakaniuliza na kama nakunga na bank account nikawaambia sina i was like 18 then or 19 <coughs> kuna bank sina so wakasema sasa wewe utafungua ka account alafu utakujia chekia kwa friday ya 30000 mm. ai 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 E, nikaenda hiyo check on that particular day like on monday hivi nilikuwa hapo saa mbili wakanipea hiyo check nikaenda nikai bank wa my banka alafu after three working days the 30000 shillings has been credited to your account sasa hapo nilienda on what can only be called a buying and spending spree kwanza niliteremka nili na hapa chini kwa very local joint ya chips na kuku very popular very popular kutoka hapo hivyo nje kuna mahoka around hapo ngara ai 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 wanauza viatu nuku eh sweta nini nini mimi huwa na mabank so Nika... then you in campus sama eh, ni ndio nimeingia kampu niko fresh kabisa niko fresh kabisa ikafika point sasa nikasema unajua nini Una, unajua unaingia unaingia instagram unaona your favorite dj wana hype of an event along gong road ama langata road ama mombasa road ai 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 na these are only pubs na tunasikia ngati zinakuanga tu Buda nilijipeana mimi ai 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 unatoka hapo unaingia local pub hapo Mombasa Road wewe oh, unaona watu wengine wenye wanakunywa brown bottles local beers ni kama wana pesa <laughs> watu wenye wanakunywa local beers wao wana pesa sasa wewe wewe sasa hata unaitisha on the bottle zile kubwa kubwa on the bottle alafu hata una ya company na, na drinks na sijui bitings na nini ai, ai. So first of all on that night only unapata unatumia kitu kama 10000 peke yake. So 10000 na hizi siku za kwanza mbili ulikuwa umeshatumia 5000. Long and sh- the long and short of it is by by kitu kama the 7th of the next month you nilipua nilipata hiyo do on the 27th. 7th nilikuwa nimebakisha kama 1500 ama 2000 hapo hivyo. Ah by the way mimi sijui I think saa zingine unajua hata si wewe si ndio si wewe sasa kama uko na brother mdogo tuseme yeah. mwenye ana yeah. what would be your advice sasa utamwacha pia yeye yeah, i experience hiyo ah, lakini mshahara wa kwanza lazima uenjoy <laughs> <laughs> lazima uenjoy nah, nah, I, think, i think it's good to appreciate yourself sometimes <laughs> yeah kurudishia mwili shukrani that's uh, our saying our phrase uh, uh, I, I think what I can advise my brother me asev kidogo probably then the rest ah dibame man <laughs> I think the system needs to prepare us for the future and and everything that we need to know uh, as far as saving is concerned and financial literacy that's this morning's episode of your voice good morning I'm Brian Mushiri That's a candid conversation amongst two young men and the truth of the matter is hey what to rudishia mwili shukurani but the point is how long do you do that for and ensure that you also keep the future in mind that's what we'd like to look at this morning but i think i will ask my panelists to allow me to peel this onion layer by layer and would like to go back the question of the day is what did you do with your first salary or income What did you spend it on? Anesta, I'd like to know. What yeah. did you? 
do. I, it's just interesting to hear all the comments around yeah. what people do with their fast money. Yeah. It's almost like it's planted in your mind. Yeah. You don't forget it. Yeah. I moved out of the house. I was living with my parents. Uh -huh. And the first thing I did was I wanted to get my own place, bought a mattress only and a TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I had a house that had just a mattress and a TV, which was just interesting because you enter the house and the first thing you see is not a chair, you see a TV and a mattress somewhere. And it's just, I was very keen to make sure I'm independent. And mm -hmm. so I was asking, how do I move out? How do I start traveling? How do I start spending money so that then I, I was fortunate enough to get a job almost immediately after campus. Okay. And so the question was, what do I want to be able to do? Mm -hmm. With hindsight, there are so many choices that I made that I wish I had mm -hmm. a lot more advice uh, around them. Yeah. The, so that was the first thing. I moved out. I immediately, one of my friends was working as a salesperson in an insurance company. And salespeople are very good at selling. Oh, yeah. And I remember he came and he told, sold it for me an education policy. That was one of the worst mistakes I ever made as far as money goes. <laughs> because I started putting in money every month. And it was a 10-year policy. And I remember eventually when I got out of it, I looked at what I'd made in the period and I thought I'd have done so much mm. with that money. And that has been the journey of me and very many people. We, okay. we get excited with that money and the people around you then influence what you do and what you don't do. And for me, the big thing was move out, have a mattress and have something called an education policy because it sounded very fancy. All right. And <laughs> use some of it in your own travels and uh -huh. small things but not not thinking way ahead okay would you say that you are aptly prepared to handle money no way okay. that and and to be honest that has taken a very many years mm -hmm. to undo because that was many years back mm -hmm. and as I said I started out with a very good job yeah. and I look back at the money I was making I was employed I worked in UK at some point yeah. and I look back at with what I've done with that money and sometimes I think I wish I had a lot more literacy then because mm. ultimately time moves. And when you look back, you're able to say, I made quite a bit of money, but what did I do with that money? Oh. And, and I yeah. think that, that is the question we all ask ourselves. Yeah. We wish we knew what we know now yes. then. Now, Robert, I see you smiling. Let's be candid here so that the young ones know. What did you do with your first salary? Mine was quite interesting because mm -hmm. uh, with my first salary, I went to Malindi and when I was there, I had to borrow <laughs> so that I could come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you had planned to go but never thought of how to come back. Yeah, I never planned, but when I realized that the salary is coming like in the next two days, yeah. I just made up my mind and oh, said wow. that I'm going to Malindi. Uh, then uh, when I was there, I think I overshot my budget and had to borrow from a friend to come back. Okay, so did you say you spent money that wasn't even already in your pocket? Yes, I'd, I'd already spent it in my mind, so I was just waiting for it to come. <laughs> oh, wow, talk about <laughs> excitement. And I'll ask the same question. Do you think you were ever uh, prepared to handle money when you were younger? No, no, I think when you were young and growing, the dream was, uh, for my view, uh, you go to university, after that you'll be able to buy a car, buy big houses. So there's no connection like uh, planning your life and being real. Because uh, there are short-term expenses, there are long-term expenses. Mm -hmm. And also there are things that you need to do. Like maybe you need to go back to school. Uh, there are things that you want to do for yourself and your family. So I didn't ever have that robust plan. Mm -hmm. So it was just the excitement of the things that you grew up with uh, yes. that you wanted to do so that you can be seen to be someone who has completed campus and mm -hmm. is now working. So that was the biggest idea. So for you listening to the two gentlemen talk about what it is they did with their first money resonates with you? Y yes, yes. I, I think it's just that mm -hmm. uh, in terms of planning, yes. uh, really there's no plan to be honest. So it, it will be what will be in your mind at that point in time. Okay. The excitement will just take over and the money will fly. Uh, then you try to say that next time you'll be more careful. Mm -hmm. Then the months uh, just goes and uh, they'll go. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe in future when you s sit down and introspect is when you can start looking at it keenly. So for some people it can be one year, others even 10, 20. 
So that's the situation we are in. And uh, talking to many people, I think, uh, is a story that you have across board. Yeah. Because there's no way, you can even go to school and complete a PhD in Kenya mm. without ever learning about money. So it's like a foreign thing in our lives. Aha. Uh -huh. I hear you loud and clear, and we'll get uh, and delve deeper into that conversation in a moment. Let's hear now from Rosaline. What's your experience with your fast income? Thank you so much. Um, I remember my first income was uh, about 6,500. So it was from a writing gig that I had done. It was I, I was not employed at the time, but as every young person who tries to um, you know, do a side hustle here, a side hustle there, then with that income I got, I tried to change my wardrobe. Then I remember the second uh, income that I got from uh, you know, those big gigs. Yes. I supported a friend's business because I wanted to be a co-owner, but that business actually went down. Ooh. Okay, and uh, when you think about handling money, did you ever see any of that done in the house for you to say, perhaps this is how money is spent? Yes, actually, um, I'm happy to say that my mom and my aunt were excellent models of, um, you know, what it means to be frugal. And, you know, they taught me how to literally delay gratification, not rush for uh -huh. the biggest thing. So I can't say I was as totally unprepared, but um, now getting into the world of work mm. and, you know, um, especially in consistent income, um, I really had to learn a few more things along the way, which, you know, I was like, why didn't I have this conversation when I was either in campus or at home? Because as, um, you know, as, as he has mentioned earlier, it's that there are so many things you have to unlearn on a personal level. Okay. And uh, let's hear from the other gentleman, Dan Dennis Karaba. What is your experience? I mean, I think you must be the youngest in the job market, just entering the job market last year. How is that going for you? Well, so far so good. My life in the job market has been more than fortunate. Mm -hmm. But with my first money, I wasn't yet employed. It was a data collection gig. And I was hell bent on making sure I get a phone that's bigger than my farm. At least <laughs> that was my first. That was my first goal. I, and I, I had no qualms about it. Mm -hmm. um, when I first got my first salary, I spent 95% on, of it on shoes. I, I was I was a good advocate of to me a person who's aware. Ah. I understand what the rest are saying. You know, you have the knowledge, you know, you're supposed to do this, but when the money hits your hand or my investor, because then we didn't have a bank account, yes. just things go out of the head and you're just about, let's make money, let's spend this money. Those things I've been seeing people do mm. is what I want to do for myself right now. Mm. But I was also fortunate enough to, to get uh, financial literacy classes earlier on while I was in third year in campus. Okay. And for me, that has really helped me now put together the money that I'm earning okay. and now channel them in the appropriate ways. Okay, Dennis, let's take, ba take you back to when you got that fast salary and all that. Did mom and dad ever set you up to know what to do with it? Yes, yes. My mom had been, had been a, a very strong advocate of saving and investing ever since I can remember. But I was always resisting. I was just wondering, why my small monies? Why do you want me to give someone my small monies? Yeah. Why Why am I supposed to be planning ahead? You know me, I'm meeting at your house. Why Why are you forcing me to do this thing? Mm -hmm. And she was always on my case. And I made a point of not telling her when I got my first money because I knew she was going to insist. <laughs> Open that bank account. I've been telling you, put that money in there. This, this circle. I can I can introduce you. But I'm like, no. Kulara Havanza. Okay, all right. We hear you loud and clear, and I love that. Uh, to me, a pesa kuzoe is something that most people actually say when it comes to money. But then again, as we said, it's not really about what you do when you're starting off where you're actually ignorant about how you handle money. It's what you do after that when you have the knowledge, if at all, on how to handle money. Again, the question of the day to you is, what did you do with that fast salary or income? Let's have more of your feedback on screen. We have Margaret Omboy who says, uh, I paid my debts first, bought a pair of shoes, a few clothes, a good cologne. I had arrived officially. Margaret, we hear you. Kipro Teach Chumba says, I bought a TV, solar and a battery for my mother. She's now enjoying watching like other netizens. Wow, children that are really caring of their parents. Kapaka Soul says, Nilifre mizo noti alafu uhuru wakaleta noti mpia. Mtu anataka thaunane zenye niya 
romantic anipatia hizi mpya za 16000 juu zinararuka raruka haraka tumekuwa hina <laughs> why would you want to frame them okay Onesmus, half of it I gave my parents, the rest ni kaji spoil, only to realize sijali parent. Ay, Onesmus, yawa. But you're not alone. Ellie says, I bought 10 shirts at night from a mtumba guy. When reaching home, I realized that they were all blouses. <laughs> I then hooked them, but wapi. The first lady I met said that these blouses were resembling shirts again. Oh, imagine I didn't get back to work. It was on a t- <laughs> oh my word! Frida Borioki says to buy myself clothes only to remain with 40 bob, which took me home. Where? Frida? Hi, Abasi. I wonder how things are going now. Mandere says they took it away after withdrawing thieves. Oh dear. Sorry. Nairobi, Polisana. Amondi Nashipai says I used it as fair for the following month. Okay, at least you made use of it appropriately. Esther says, I got my first salo after high school. I was working at a phone shop selling phone casings. It paid for my first passport and the rest is history. Well, how responsible of you, Esther. Now, Maria says, I received my first salary the same day I gave birth to my son. So it was all about him. Talk about a blessing. Duncan says, bought a bed and a four-inch mattress. Salary was 432 shillings. Wewe, I think, ulikuwa wahapo awali. Sababu, 432 cannot do anything for you now. Feyi says, gave it to my parents. Imagine I was given only, give, I was only given 2,000 shillings. I hear you. The fact that you actually blessed your parents is a big deal. And Sam Morethi, a last one for now. I bought a 56-meter house in Kitu... Oh, 56 million house in Kitusuru. I see. Fast salary. Kwa nini, nini unafanya? <laughs> so I fully furnished it. Then I bought myself a 1.5B 1963 Ferrari uh, 250 GTO. I really wish that dream I had 10 years ago would come true someday. So yeah, that's a d- dream. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your feedback and we'll take more as we go along and... As we also try to understand how to handle money wisely. Now, Esther, definitely, as you can see, the excitement about money makes you want to just go and plunge it. Most often than not, it's because you do not or have never handled money yourself. When you're starting off, because those formative years is where it actually matters, mm-hmm. what do you think perhaps parents, caregivers should always keep in mind mm-hmm. when they're introducing their children to money? Mm, that's a very good question. I think the first thing we must unlearn is handling money in our 20s mm-hmm. and be able to expose our children as early as 0 to 10 to money. There are many, especially the Western continent, you find people start using money a lot earlier. And because of that, this thing that Karafa is saying of get used to the money that starts early. Mm-hmm. So that by the time you're in your 20s, you don't have that excitement. And also you have a sense of awareness of how can I make use of the money. And so it's more things like you find that people are given a container where every time you do something good, that money is put there. Mm-hmm. And then you have a conversation around what can you use? How can you use that money? How can you spend it how can you save from it how can you invest it starting as early as possible to have the conversations with our children as far as what they can do with money means that by the time they're in their mid 20s getting their first job it's not an abnormal thing Mm -hmm. i think that's one of the bigger things that we need to unlearn that money is not meant i think we have this thing of keep your child away from incurring money i I interact a lot with uh, university students and parents to university students are against students working and I always think this is a person who's in their early 20s. If you go to other countries, actually, by the time they're in their mid-teens, they're already working and they have... I was with somebody who was talking about how they ended up buying their first car at some very early age. And it's because they were working in supermarkets mm-hmm. and carrying uh, loads and washing toilets. But what that does is it means by the time the person is in their early 20s, they don't have that ex- early excitement and Mm -hmm. so the first thing let's expose our children to money as early as possible yeah the other thing i think that perhaps even for me has been a big of a struggle is let's have let's build that culture of thinking the delayed gratification and thinking for the future and even in your 40s and in your 50s you find people think about money in terms of today 
But money was never meant to be about you thinking about it today. It's about thinking about the other generations. How do I create wealth that's sufficient to ensure the next generation doesn't have to do some of the things you've done and live better. And I think that's one of the other things that we need to do as far as mindset goes, to be able to inculcate a culture of delayed gratification mm -hmm. because you can't invest, you can't save if all you're thinking about is today, now, that's a survival mentality. Mm -hmm. And survival mentality doesn't reproduce. So when I think about my own experience, and I mentioned that I was fortunate enough to have jobs from the word go. But the biggest thing I never thought about was what will happen to me 10, 15, 20 years down the line. And because of that, it was about get this money, use it today, because next month there's a new salary. And, and especially if you're employed and you start to go into banking, you have easy access, for example, to loans. And what that does is it means you have a lifestyle that's higher than actually what you should be having. And so to have conversations of delayed gratification is not just for young people, it's also for older people. It's about even as we are employed to be able to ask, what does it take for me to think about what I'm going to be doing with my money? Mm. 20, 30 years from now. And so for me, the starting point is heavy on mindset. Start early, mm -hmm. as early as possible. Delay gratification even in your 60s. To be able, I, I hear parents talking about my money and uh, my child should hustle a bit more. No, your child should find, it's almost like a baton that has been passed. And you do the job of building values, mm -hmm. but pass a baton, that doesn't mean they start at ground zero. Because wealth shouldn't be just for one generation. Mm -hmm. I hear you. And uh, let me bring in Dennis. You mentioned that your mom had, you know, started telling you saving is a good thing and all that, but you kept resisting. And yes, your reasons made sense for a young person. But then again, what do you think should have been done better or much more of it for you to understand about the not now mentality you've got to think about the future? Uh, I would have benefited more if I was given an opportunity to work, uh, especially during campus, because mm -hmm. I was, uh, my parents were big advocates of summer, live, stop looking for money, yeah. just fast focus on school. And for me, that really didn't help me understand why I should be earning money. Mm. Because first I, I was, I was taking a, a course that would have been considered prestigious. And I always imagined straight after campus, I would jump right into the job market where I would not take anything less than 70,000 as every wow. someone wow. graduate coming in always assumes will be the case. Mm -hmm. But also if they would have taken the step of say opening a savings account for me mm -hmm. and you know asking me to really account for each money, each penny that they give me mm -hmm. in terms of allowances, in terms of say bus fare, uh, those small, small allowances and just really pushing the point home mm -hmm. or even saying if we're going to give you 3000 this week we're going to take 500 and automatically put that into your account because also learned if you don't automate your savings then you might as well just close that account mm -hmm. um so yeah for me that would have been it okay and what i still say is is, is very resonating with me Okay, Rosalind, you said mama also was very frugal and she taught you delayed gratification. What do you wish you were given more of too? All right, um, so tracing back to my earliest childhood memories, um, I used to draw like a, a photo or a picture of a house, color it and imagine the kind of house I want. And that's why I laughed when the, you know, the person who tweeted about, he bought a, a 26 million house and a GT, you know, that, uh, that car. And then I was like, Mm, uh, he he almost he had us in the in the first half. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he had us in the first half. So for me, um, this dream of a huge house was so, was so strong in me. And you know, um, slowly learning about like real estate and getting land, um, I was just like just as Dennis has pointed out. You're thinking your first salary is seventy thousand. You've done a marketable course. The way um, you know, I think in first year that was such an obsession for us because um, people used to ask like, is it? Do you choose economics? Do you choose become? Do you choose you know these financial courses, which will definitely get you, um, you know, jobs in the P PWCs, the KPMGs, you know, the big firm names and. Um, 
it was such an obsession, right? So that assumption of that, you know, you're going to be marketable enough to earn that 70, 90, 100,000, and you actually see, your, you know, someone you know who is in there and they're making that money, you're thinking, I am definitely next. So I needed to switch from assumptions, like, um, you know, just because you, you know, even if you get that 70, it doesn't mean that you will uh, automatically uh, save up everything and then in yeah. a few months you have that land in uh, the railroads, the Kamulus, and, you know, those, <laughs> that Kaburoti, as we say in, 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 uh, in uh, local language here and there. Mm. So I, I, I desired, or much later, I came to realize that I needed to switch from financial assumptions. And I can credit... Um, one of my one, one of my strongest learning experiences, even to uh, Abu Jani and, and Robert, who's sitting right here, because when I went through the the classes that they have uh, clearly outlined, it's that you get to learn about um, you know how to budget, how to um, even look at alternative investments, and that was a huge gap for me. So learning uh -huh. about things like stocks, um, you know, I was I was really I was really wowed at how much you know how how different it is to shift from thinking land to thinking stocks because mm. sometimes stocks can actually give you higher return, much higher return than land would, you know, oh, wow. even within a year or five years. So, um, you know, that some of the unlearning for me actually came with that, that I have to drop some of these assumptions. Okay. That just because you get that huge first salary or that huge first gig doesn't mean that you'll automatically fulfill your dreams within five months. You have very to well bring said. in discipline. Mm, very well said. I think all of us got a rude shock when we got into adulting and realize the salary does not translate to all these dreams you have in terms of assets. And I think what I'm hearing predominantly here, even from a younger age, is understanding the value of money. Robert, talk about that. Yeah, so basically when you talk about money, uh, people have put different meanings to it. Yeah, but it's just good to know that uh, there are general principles that would most likely get to your head. So uh, yesterday I had a session and people are talking about uh, money as being as something that brings influence. Some people look at it as a tool, uh, other people look at it as freedom. So it's very, very important to know certain things that ev everyone, irrespective of your dreams in life, you need to have them right. Mm. So I would say there are different reasons for saving and investing, but we need to know some that will apply to everyone. So you can start from there. So the first one, uh, you need to save and invest because of something we call inflation. So inflation simply means that over time, the value of goods and services will rise. And if you don't invest or save, uh, you'll be losing your purchasing power. So a good example is that a loaf of bread was uh, costing uh, around 20 Kenya shillings in the year 2004. Mm. Now it is going at around 60 Kenya shillings. Yeah. So someone who invested will have uh, over 80 Kenya shillings and they can buy probably one and a half. But the person who never invested, they just left that money under a pillow, uh, they would not be able to afford that loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing that we need to know is that we have personal goals. And uh, despite the confusion, which is natural, we all think that there's someone we are supposed to please. The only person we are supposed to please is ourselves. So we have our personal life goals. Maybe you want to go back to school, we love rugby, football, all those things that you want to do. You can make a connection between those goals and your personal finances, so that your personal finances will help you, will help you to live a fulfilled life, because you are making yourself happy, and that's the best thing that you can ever do for yourself. Aha! Uh -huh. Now let me stop you at that point because that list goes on and on and on. Eh? Let's reflect on the savings, because as you can hear, anyone who starts off handling money and they're told about savings, they don't understand. I'm working mm. so hard for this money. Mm. Why should I put it aside for? So, what's the practical way to ensure that these people grasp or we grasp mm. that notion of savings and actually see how it would work for us in the future? Because I think the default for everyone is putting the money in the bank. That's very true. And I liked what one of the, uh, one of the people said about your first job and you have this dream of being getting a job in PwC's KPMG's. I got a job with PwC, but getting that job didn't mean I knew how to manage the, the finances. And it's, you can get a lot of money, consume all of it and go through a cycle. In fact, you find a lot of people who are employed, they're living through cycles of spend, loan, spend, loan. Mm. So that's not automatic. But to answer your question around savings, I think it's several things. One is 
what, what we mentioned earlier, which is around exposing people to these practices early. And I go back to that because the mind is shaped a lot earlier. And the things that you start to do form, they're a lot harder to be able to shape a lot later. So that's very important. And the other thing is also, which is something that we spend a lot of time talking about, is understanding where you come from and what did you see. Because that impacts how you save and how you invest more than you know. Mm. So how did your parents handle money? Did they, what they, what, did you have, for example, constant conversations of money is good, money is bad. And in your brain, you thought this conversation of money is too much. And so I will never handle money in the same way. I will go a different pathway. And you'll find a lot of Kenyans, we have that. And, and it happens because, especially because of poverty, we... We grow up, most of us, with a lot of poverty. And so your first money, the first thing you want to do is run away from poverty mm -hmm. unknowingly. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like is spend, live here and now. Because you're really running away from True. the poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing you must be able to do as far as savings go is ask, what did I see growing up? And how did that impact how I view money? Unless and until that's done, it doesn't matter what else you will be told, you will be fighting it mm. because your mind is thinking, or even maybe you grew up with a lot of money and you never saw accounting for that money. I remember working with one student who she lived a very good life through her campus. Then one day she realized actually her mom was taking her through campus with loans. And that really shocked her because she'd really lived the life. And so you have to be able to ask What's the lived experience and how does that impact my mindset? Interesting. Okay. And if you're asking that question, let's hear from those that are trying to figure out life at this point. Dennis, so now you know a little bit more about savings. But when you think about it, what is a struggle in trying to ensure that you still enjoy the fruits of your labor but still put something on the side? My, my greatest struggle is is always hanging around my friends and especially those that I don't know how much they make or how even they make their money and trying to live up to uh, the, the current standard. I understood earlier on that the greatest enemy to my net worth will be my lifestyle. Mm. And it, it's always a struggle because now I have to fend for myself, but still the urge, the urge to live life here and now you know, always thinking people die each and every day, mm. but why? Why should I even put it somewhere for the future? To think I'm not paying fees, I'm not doing those things that people with responsibilities would normally do, but still uh, forcing myself to just rein, rein my, my wants in, trying to, to put money aside for the future or also just investing. Has been it has been a struggle, but what has really helped me right now is automating the savings. Once the money comes in, the savings go out immediately, mm -hmm. and at least with that, I can even just convince myself, you know, there's nothing to spend. This yeah. is what we shall do, and also making sure I don't go hungry by the third week of the month. Because that's also, <laughs> that's also important. We hear you loud and clear, Rosalind. You are an economist, as you are an entrepreneur. Is it easy for you to put aside the savings? Um, for me personally, yes, because um, I had been accustomed actually to saving from the first time I handled money. Mm -hmm. um, I think as uh, Esther had pointed out earlier, it's that children being able to handle money from a tender age and you know something as simple as financial integrity being able to return change um, like if you send me for 50 bob and 50 shillings and then mm -hmm. um, there's a balance of even 10 shillings for that child to be able to return that finan I mean uh, financial integrity discipline budgeting it comes from actually that um, you know it comes from those small habits because if I didn't used to return change then I would not have appreciated savings in my uh, you know in my working life so yeah, yeah. it comes back to those those literally micro habits mm, and speaking about micro habits another struggle is the budgeting you know where you're literally telling yourself these are the priorities and I need to stick to them. And then as Dennis is saying, life overtakes you and you just cannot hold back but splunge. How is your experience, Rosalind? Thank you for that. Um, I'll talk about one, one of the things that um, tends to influence especially our financial perspective. Uh, aside from the subconscious influences that you've had um, while growing up, 
social media pressure. This conversation uh, is inevitable when you're talking about finance because, um, you know, right from the time you will leave, let's say, high school or campus or um, even your, your workplace, your first workplace, your first connections, you're seeing someone who is living their life and they are posting it, they are flaunting it, they are eating in the finest restaurants that you've never heard about. They're going to these, um, you know, vacations and getaways that you've never even seen and they're in Kenya. You even wonder, um, do I really know my own country? Do I really know my own city? And um, <laughs> every other weekend they are out and you're wondering, why am I not doing this? Yet we are peers. And, you know, it comes back to those financial assumptions like, am I able to say no because I don't have that money now? Or, um, you know, am I going to be there feeling discontent and pressured? Like, every, mm -hmm. I have to follow this person. I have to ask them not to leave me behind. You know, I have to, I have to keep up with this image because be, uh, being uh, very honest, even I had to um, take a few months to actually sit back, look like I'm not doing anything, yeah. and, you know, be the one who's just not out there. Um, you'd call me an introvert sometimes, actually, but by personality, but some would argue otherwise, because, <laughs> well, it depends on how you met me, but um, I have to literally just bring that out, that we have to be okay with sometimes not looking like we're living the life mm. if we're going to get our financial habits right, because what's the point of impressing someone else who maybe even is struggling, and they will never tell you. You don't know if they got loans, you don't know if they are dealing with Shylocks, yeah. you don't know, <laughs> you know, you, you don't really know behind the scenes, because um, unfortunately, financial conversations are such a taboo, unfortunately, to date because, you know, you, you, if you don't know um, what you, your peers are earning simply because, um, you know, there's, you feel like you're working on elk shells if you're going to bring up that conversation, it, it's, it's just here with us, you know. So uh -huh. there has to be a way for us to um, have safe spaces where even if we don't talk about the figure that we are earning and, you know, we're trying to avoid some of these social pains around, um, you know, will this person judge me? Mm -hmm. um, will I look like I'm not making it? Will I look like I've not arrived? Who are we proving this to? So we have to be very honest and actually have this safe conversation so that, um, you know, we're able to create um, healthy habits for ourselves. Oh, wow. I like Rosalind. I like how you think. And uh, I'm sure your friends must be saying, I'm glad to have a friend like this because these are real conversations. And perhaps even as you enjoy your young life, I mean, you should be able to balance out enjoying it and also putting something aside for your future. And uh, speaking of which, I understand we have a caller on the line. Okay, then let's take a short break right here on your world. When we come back, a lot more of your feedback, even as you share with us how you use that fast salary or fast income uh, right after this break. Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory, you can open an account and leap a pole pole at your convenience? Did you know at Rui Rumabati Factory, you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage? Did you know Rui Rumabati Factory offers free delivery countrywide within 72 hours? Call us now on 0111-050-700. Rui Rumabati Factory. Malisafi kwa beipoa.
Just one capful of Dettol is enough to disinfect surfaces and protect your family and your home. Dettol, tested effective against COVID-19. Let me tell you something, my friend. When I was still in school, I was the very best when it comes to English. Yes, Grandma, I was the very best, <laughs> top of my class. I even used to teach the other students uh, the alphabet. A is for Asanal, B is for Basanal, C is for Sasanal, D is for Dasar. No, 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 no. D is for discount. <laughs> to get Indian alphabet, dial star 812 star 805 hash. Skiza na nation. Accountability and ownership is not very clear. NYS is a place where people go and steal money and that money disappears. We never talk about it again. A lot of theft has taken place after the handshake. All the young people after the handshake, they see no evil, they hear no evil. When things are not right, we question. Financial data in, in Kenya is, is served cold. Should President Uhuru Kenyatta be impeached? Those are the list of our problems at the moment. We should be embarrassed. What, one day, All what, of us. Andy, hang on. What, what, what is the citizen's work? The citizen's work is to demand a better economy. Lifestyle Heights, a prestigious gated community in a tranquil environment offering elegantly styled two or three and a three bedroom plus a DSQ apartment. Combining tasteful design and modern amenities, contact us on 0706 155 277 or 0726 205 208. It is your world. My name is Gladys Gashanja. Today it's about financial literacy. Still helping us along with this, Esther Moniki, who is the CEO and founder of Lapid Leaders Africa, Robert Ching, who is the CEO and co founder of Abojani Investment, Rosalind Wanjiro, who is an entrepreneur, and Dennis Karaba, who is a project manager at BNL Management Limited. Thank you all for being part of this conversation. And before we went to break, Rosalind touched on the fact that it's very, very important to be self aware as far as what you can do or what you cannot do and also govern yourself as to the same and uh, robert that points to budgeting especially this is something that most people uh, most people struggle with especially when you're starting off and that's a low is kidogo or even your income is little and you feel there's no need to budget because really you know what needs to be taken care of in the first place is this how we should be looking at money when it comes to budgeting yeah, so the most important thing that uh, we've come to learn as a Bojani investment after interacting with over 5,000 Kenyans in matters personal finance is that the biggest thing that you need to know is that you need to make a connection between your personal finances and life goals. So with that, it becomes very easy uh, mm. to keep on learning and grow. So we've come up with uh, three pillars. So the first one is uh, the mindset because that is very personal and you need to have a meeting with yourself and not anyone in the room, just yourself, and you decide what you want for yourself and your money. So after that, that is not enough, because Esther talked about the fact that some uh, insurance advisor uh, mm. advised her to buy some education policy that she didn't need. So that means that you need to have the right skill sets. Because yeah. if you are a good saver and people know that you are good at saving, but you have zero skills, they'll come and scam you. Mm. So. People are out there and they have an idea of people who are earning good money in terms of profession and where they hang out. So they'll come and sell those. You can have all this knowledge, you can have PhD in finance, but you are doing nothing. So you need the tool set. 
So you go and open that investment account and put in the money. It doesn't matter how much you know, uh, whether you are an analyst at Bloomberg or BBC, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't open that circle account and put that money consistently, you are off than other people. So you need to have those three pillars. If any of them is off balance, you not achieve our goals. Because you can save very well uh, and with zero skill set, you'll always be going for high returns. Uh -huh. Yet in the mindset, you know that the first thing is that investing is risk management. You need to play defensive and organize your resources. So I know most people are either uh, professionals or they're, they're entrepreneurs. That effort that you put in, into that business or that effort that you put for the companies that you work for, so whether they are Safaricom, Equity, KCB, put it also in your personal finances. Because you sit in meetings, you do budgeting, uh, things are fixed to work. So uh -huh. what about us as individuals? Okay. So we can do what our bosses tell us to do, but you can't do what you tell ourselves that you'll do for <laughs> our finances. So you see, mm -hmm. that's why that mindset will drive you. And the biggest thing that we've seen in our community is consistency. So you have to be consistent because that is what will give you the power. You'll see that it is possible. So there's no motivation here mm. that will come from outside. If you can save 5,000 uh, in month one, month two, month three, you'll see that you'll have 15. And you can already see that you're on, way, you're on your way to 60. So that motivation is internal. And we can talk about it, but until you do it by yourself, mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll never see it. You'll <laughs> just be talking a lot, seeing how I'm just saving 5K, it is going nowhere. People like our parents and grandparents, they got ahead when there are no technology or anything, yes. just by being consistent. And some of them, they can bail us out despite the fact that we earn like 10 times them. Mm. Yeah, so that's the irony because mm -hmm. we have the challenge of availability bias where the money comes in and you just feel like there's a press button to send. So budgeting is key. And you can look at a country like Kenya, we budget, companies budget, everyone plans. You can go into the websites of the best companies here in Kenya, they have their strategic plans. Okay. So what about me as an individual, Robert? Where am I going? Very important, yes. very important. And uh, it takes a lot of discipline. And uh, even as the young men were talking about Kurudushia Mwili Shukrani, I think that is the best way to do so. You know, put a little bit on the side. But then again, even as we are talking about budgeting and what needs to be done, it takes a lot of discipline. Mm. And at times, the discipline can be thwarted by familiarity. Mm. So you're older, mm. you've been doing this for a while, you don't think you need to budget anymore. And mm. before you know it, oh dear, you're hemorrhaging money. Mm -hmm. What should we all always be consistent about? I think for starters, have a clear purpose. I found purpose goes, enables discipline very easily. And purpose looks like clear goals. So I mentioned how I struggled with money initially. I am very disciplined with money today. And the reason is not anything else but that I have a clarity of what I want to do with my life. I have clarity of the things I want to build. I have clarity of what I want to make sure my children and my children's children life looks like. And so the bigger tool for building discipline is investing in yourself and understanding what do I want my life to be about? And that's a purpose conversation. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to have those conversations when we are a lot older. Mm. And we have, to, and that's why we work with the youth because the earlier you figure out that I want my life to be about building businesses, I want to be able to build schools, I want to be able to impact children, whatever that may look like, then that enables you to become disciplined because it's less about the today gratification and more about the things that I want to be able to build. And so the first and the most important thing is, and this is not a magic pill, it's you must spend time, and that's why we work quite a bit with coaches, just to explore what matters to you. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, you don't, you don't emerge today as a person who loves media. I promise you it's been part of your journey. Yes. And and. And also then being able to connect with why do I love media? Is it that it impacts, it tells stories of people, it impacts communities. Once you have that clarity, then you want to build, it becomes less about what other people are doing and more about this is the purpose that I want to be known for. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, then the second thing is around values. And I think that's what I'm hearing a lot of people talking about. It's very, and I find values and purpose go together. Purpose enables values. It's easier to be indisciplined when you don't have a clear purpose mm -hmm. but when you do you're able to say okay this is where I'm going this is what needs to happen in between um, and even when you don't know about purpose values is a job that all of us need to do and I love the example that was given around financial integrity um, even if you're making the least 
you must be able to have the discipline because it's a value system yeah. that's ab that's able to say this is what i have this is what I want to be able to do and how do I apply the discipline in between. And so for me, it's purpose, but also building a value system in all of us to be able to account and use money in a way that uh, accomplishes the goal. Okay. All right. So it's something that you have to continually keep doing as you go about life. You never are good enough or old no. enough to do this stuff. No. Yeah. Okay. Now let's take a bunch of your feedback too, because there is a lot of it in as far as what you did with your first salary or your first income. I mean, it's from that experience that you get better or you learn something or two to ensure that you handle money better in the future. Tessie Junior says, my first salary was 7,000. 7, I had a debt with my employer, so he had to slice 2,000. I had 5K to budget for. I was a second year in a private university. Hand, hand out cyber and I wanted to make someone smile. Not my girlfriend, but at least someone less fortunate. I set 2,000 for schoolwork, 2,000 for myself, and 500 I helped someone. The other 500 was for emergency purposes. Oh, wow, somebody who already had an idea of what to do with the money. Francis says, what everyone else spends their salary on, I mean, spend it to pay the debts that had accumulated in the previous month so I could be able to borrow the next month. Oh, wow. Debt, debt is another issue we need to delve into. Sharon says, I bought six kgs of six kg gas cylinder up to date. It's still there. I say, how long has it been, Sharon? <laughs> Brian says, I gave it to my mom to keep it for me. I didn't have any responsibility. And when I asked her for the money after two years, ha! <laughs> Oh yeah, you know what the answer is. I think we all do. <laughs> Nguva Masa says, Nilichukua salari yangu ya 279,000. Nilinunua waze wote. Nilinunulia waze wote wa village chai. Alafu nika pitia sokoni, nikipea kila mama mboga chwani, nikifika nyumbani, nikambia mama watoto leo ni leo tuta, tumeteseka siku nyingi. Aoge nikamnunulie ile plot ilikuwa inashindia, inash, anashindia kunililia. Asubuhi nikiamka, nikapata ilikuwa tu ni ndoto. Nikamka kukunywa tu strong tea yangu na mandazi. <laughs> we hear you. Kasim says I was operating in one... And uh, in one un one underpants, I remember my first salary was actually 2,500. Wow. And lucky enough, it was on a market day. I spent 1,000 to buy pants. Wow. Kasim, we hear you. Wanjiko says, I gave everything to my ex-husband. The stupidity I had was from here to Timbuktu. Ah. Wanjiko. There are many others who are just smiling and thinking. Abdullah, he says. Paying debts as at neighbor's shop that I was eating eight months looking for a job. Abdullahi, bless you. One boy says, I went to Kenchik, bought myself a full chicken, na chips, na sausage, nine, na fanta baridi. <laughs> Nikakula half and did take away half yadi. That week was a Kenchik week. First payday was upgrade from Luthuli. We hear you, one boy. Another here from Nyawira who says, I bought a Sony Ericsson K750i. Hey, we went to Kitambo. That's an old phone. Gilly says, Nili piga sherehe mbaya mbovu. Aya, kurudishia muili shukrani mwingine hapo. George says, ah, my first salary at MJA nililipo 500. Nikajipatia, nikajipata mtu wa mutura amenda na so yangu mbili. <laughs> All right. And uh, then so here says, I bought Timberland shoes. I had always dreamt of wearing them. And there was no way my mom would spend 7,000 shillings on a mere shoe. I saw Bufa and sent the rest to my mom. The rest sustained me till the next month's pay. Wow. Okay, Benson, at least you thought through your monies and were still able to remain with something and cater for your mom's needs. And even as we listen into this, and uh, part of what has been said here is the importance of acknowledging that you might not have it all now, but there's still a little bit that you can put aside that can serve you. Dennis, do you ever feel that your, dream, your dreams are too big for the money that you earn today? Definitely. Um, and that's uh, something I'm trying to live with. Because also, if my dreams are to be enough for the money I'm making now, it's, it only says that my dreams are very small. Mm. But it's also important to, to understand that it's okay and to be content with what I have now. 
and also just to dream a little bigger so that I can push myself to find more innovative ways of making money that are actually legal. Okay. Also that. So you've been working how long now? Uh, this month I was celebrating my second year anniversary at work. Ooh, so it's been two years and definitely yeah. I'm sure you're better off with the money than you were when you were starting off. Or just say live a comfortable life. Yeah. And if I manage to discipline myself to stick to that, it wouldn't be too hard for me to really focus on investing some of the money that I, I have. And also understanding that creating wealth is a, is a lifelong journey. I, I can be rich now, but richness and wealth, rich, being rich and being wealthy are two different things. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to be wealthy. I'm working towards being wealthy. Because as they say, money comes and money goes. Mm. And if you don't plan for it, it will definitely go. That you can be assured of. It's never assured that it will come, but you're always assured it will go. Okay, so, and definitely the right mindset is the right step in the right direction. Now, Rosalind, again, entrepreneur, economist, did you branch off to business to supplement your salary today, perhaps to propel your dreams? Um, yes, definitely, because um, when I was in campus, I think the last year when we were, um, you know, dreaming and trying to see the, the job opportunities that we would take up, um, it became very real, especially after the first few months after graduation. Um, you know, you do all these aptitude tests, all these applications, a few interviews here and there, and then you realize um, that's whatever you thought in terms of getting your first job, it's, uh, you know, it's going to take a while. There was that statistic I came across that um, in Kenya it can take you up to five years to get a job after graduation, and that shocked me. It was a, it was a massive wake-up call because I thought, okay, um, well, am I going to stay for five years with nothing to do? No. So that's where the, you know, that, that um, drive toward looking at alternative uh, business opportunities came. And I remember my first, okay, like, you know, when you Google uh, basically what to do with uh, online jobs, I know there's a bit of a controversy sometimes because, um, you know, people wonder, should you, you know, like consider the online writing gigs and things like that, you know, these short-term paying tasks. And um, I spent quite a bit of time then. I got my first, I, I remember my first um, gig was in editing because that's something I could learn uh, on myself and that was away from my degree. So I think I can speak to a lot of people who are wondering, okay, I have this full-time job or I've done this course, um, you know, I've studied this and that, I have a diploma, but I'm not getting jobs. I would mm. say consider some online uh, jobs that do not require you to have skills. Of course, not the ones for, um, you know, very weird links and, um, of course, there are, there's a whole other conversation on things to do to avoid scams yeah. with online jobs, but there are legitimate ones. So even if you're going to make that uh, 20,000 per job or that, um, it, 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 you know, it varies definitely. And some of them are really time intensive, but like for me, it was editing and transcribing initially. I, have to, I had to move away from that. So um, it's that my, what I learned then is that you cannot, um, you know, you can't just get stuck by saying, this is what I studied and mm. I am not getting work in that. No, you have to be flexible enough because, um, you know, as Esther Apkley pointed out, it's that um, in a culture where you've been able to do uh, small jobs and gigs as a teenager, they, they don't bother you. you. You shouldn't have to feel like you're lowering your pride by doing certain jobs. And I think that's something, especially for us as young people, we need to, um, you know, break away from that mentality. Like, you know, making 15,000 here is, you know, it's beneath me. No, it should not be beneath me because money is money. Is money. <laughs> yes. as, as long as you're getting your decent income and you're able to take care of, of a few of your bills, and it's not just bills. There's this other issue of, um, you know, you're not giving your money a name. So, for instance, with uh, healthcare, like, do you, you know, do you have to wait for um, that medical emergency? Then you realize, oops, I did not have a cover. I did not have uh, anyone to call and sort me out at the hospital. So we need to be able to give these um, these things that we need to take care mm -hmm. of a name so that by the time I'm looking at this small job that will give me um, you know, that 15K here, that 20K there, it's, you know, you're actually able to fill up. Um, yeah. I, I love this influencer called uh, Just Ivy because every Monday she shares um, the money, it's, I think it's Money Mondays, and such amazing insight because she really breaks it down to the, to the smallest unit and how people can make money in, um, you know, the smallest of ways.
Okay, interesting perspective there. Now, Robert, there's a lot of us who actually struggle with the prioritization. And uh, at times you think you're doing very well. And somebody said a lot of Kenyans are just, you know, one sickness away to poverty. So how should we prioritize our monies to ensure that even as you work so hard, this money will work for you? Thank you very much for that. So actually, I've come to realize that uh, personal finance is not just about saving and investing. So it is a whole value chain. And I had to, it took me three years to realize that. But now I'm at peace, and I hope to share that with many people. Yeah. So uh, the reason why personal finance, each and everyone should look at it as their empire, like the Roman Empire should guard it jealously. Mm -hmm. uh, so it starts with financial planning whereby you look at your income and uh, your outflows, where the money is going, and you look at your goals and where you want to be. Uh, so you'll have short-term and long-term goals, and it is very important to prioritize so that uh, whatever you want to do can match your cash flows. Mm -hmm. And we always have this, money is just a byproduct of mental capital, which is what you can do. Uh, so Gladys can do news very well. Uh, you are a media personality. That's what you can do, what, what I can do. So that's mental capital. Okay. It's skill, uh, skill set, and uh, it is about qualifications. It's about experience. So that is what you can do. But we can never create value for ourselves. We only create people when other people know that you can create value. Because of that, we need social capital. So okay. like Dennis said, you need to grow your social capital over time. Don't be that quiet person just, that just sits in a corner at work, at school. People will forget about you when opportunities come up. So if you grow your social relationship capital and you grow your mental capital, mm -hmm. those two will give you financial capital. So okay. that financial capital, you use it to plan for your life. And life is not about saving and investing only because after financial planning, you look at where to invest. And you still need to look at how to manage risk using insurance products. So you might be doing very well, but you might lose sight and get into debt. So debt management is very key. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This is white, one of the thorn in the flesh for most people. Debt management. We hear there's good debt, there's bad debt. Mm. But in this day and age, especially with the digital lending, mm. very young people are starting off on mm. debt. Mm. Talk about this. I really love what he said about mental capital and social capital. Because I find many of us are running after money, but we forget that money is a tool that's supposed to achieve specific things. And I love what he's saying about mental capital, social capital, ending up becoming wealth and money. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to create wealth, what you want to invest in is not how do I get money, because money is a byproduct. It's how do I create mental capital and social capital that then becomes the end product mm -hmm. is money. Unfortunately, our culture at the moment focuses on the money. It doesn't focus on the mental capital and the social capital. And that's where you have a debt problem. Because if your focus is, I want to have money, I want to have money, why do you want to have money? And so that becomes lifestyle issues. It becomes, I want to compare with my social media and be seen that I'm traveling across the country and be seen that I have this car that is humongous. And over time that becomes that you're living a life that's not real. Mm -hmm. And so the focus shouldn't be on the money. The focus should be, how do I build my mind? How do I build my relationships? How do I build a clarity of what I want my life to be about? Focus first on those three things. And especially for young people for now, which is, I must make my wealth now. I must be successful today because my peers are successful today. Mm -hmm. Then debt becomes inevitable. And right, and, and, and I want to spend, I'm just spending a lot of time on that. And there's an element of good debt, but a lot of young people are in bad debt. Mm -hmm. There's a statistic that was released recently that was talking about, about I think 14 million Kenyans are already listed in CRB. In developed countries, that would mean you're done because mm -hmm. it means you can't manage the most basic thing. If you can't manage money, I can't manage, you can't manage time, you can't manage social capital, you can't manage anything. Mm -hmm. And so managing money is just an element of the maturity that you have to be able to entrust it with a lot more. Yeah. 
And so we must have conversations that enable people to ask, what does it look like for me to live within my means? I worked within the bank and one of the most unfortunate things was we would give loans and then you go and find the person now, their lifestyle has changed. The money goes to salons. Right now, there are people who, entrepreneurs who are constantly competing for capital. And that's not everybody. Mm. But they compete for that capital to be able uh, to go and buy a car. Your lifestyle has to be subject to discipline and values that serve you. That's the first thing. The second thing is then to be able to ask, with that in mind, does that money reproduce? Mm. is it debt that's constant or is it debt that reproduces and that allows me to be able to close that debt if it's debt that can't reproduce that's a lifestyle problem and so reproducing means for example i'm setting up a shop and i need to be able to buy money for setting up the hardware shop and that money as much as i'm taking that debt that debt will repay itself in the form of the sales and you also have to be very honest with that because sometimes we justify lifestyle problems as money that will reproduce so i remember a while back working with somebody who had taken a significant loan mortgage for a house and the argument was i will have the house i can be able to pay rent and so the money comes back but you will lose a job what happens to that mortgage mm -hmm. And so is it a real debt or is it a lifestyle debt? Because if it was a real debt, maybe even the better route is to go and start constructing and move pole pole, set up the foundation, go and look for money for another few years, come back. And so the big thing about debt is one, is it a lifestyle and that you have to be very honest with? Two, is, it, is money more important to you than money is a product? And that's the most important thing we have to figure out. Okay. Mental capital, social capital, that becomes money. And so that means what is more important is not the money. It's how your mind is growing, how your relationships are growing, and how you're preparing then yourself to be able to manage that money. So that you can be able to sustain it. Yes. Okay. And I love that word, sustain it. Sustainable right. wealth. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll delve further into that in a moment. We need to take another short break right here on your world. When we come back, we take a look at more of your feedback, even as you share uh, with us what it is you did with your first salary or income, and also understand some other aspects about financial literacy. Stay with us. Enjoy the best family entertainment on Star Times Classic or Smart Bouquet. Oh, yes. Subscribe to Classic Bouquet for only 899 for 30 days or Smart Bouquet for only 999 for 30 days. Come on, eBay. Ni Star Times. If you know, you know. We have a banger. mix on MTV. about all the trendy and popular entertainment events. Yes, 
Any vibe ya kibazu na for me to do Bazu, big man, bazu Bazu, bazu, bazu Ni ufanya biz na mabazu Join me, Ted Agua, right here on your favorite channel Hatuna maneno kukwetu Tuna venana kikwetu Kwetu mix on MTV and certificate programs in the following schools nursing business and economics islamic sharia and islamic studies computing education and social sciences law and sharia apply now for the january may and september intakes Uma university fostering knowledge and innovation with all due respect with all due respect with all due respect should we despair at this push and pull as President Uru Kenyatta decided to choose judges and leave others? Questions have been raised on the six. There's so many questions to think about. The way to clear those questions is a process through JSC. This is not the process. The, if the President had issues before, <clears throat> yes. when these people are being interviewed, he should have raised these issues then. It is not to say that after 2010 judges are not committing any crimes. You can go to the judiciary and have missing files. And it is not missing. Your file kupatikana at UGPANG, at Cheza Kamawewe, James Smart, Cheza Kamawewe. When you start seeing measles outbreaks, as we had started seeing, then you know that an immunization program has been interrupted. What is the role of immunization? Routine immunization is the backbone of protecting the children. The individuals that get vaccinated are protected against severe disease and hospitalization and against death. And how can we achieve optimal coverage of these life-saving vaccines? Until the production of these vaccine is to the level that is required, there will be a problem. Weka pesa yako kwa panga account juu KDIC imekuwa kikisia iko safe weka kitu kwa panga Be sure check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall KDIC protecting your deposits Heights, a prestigious gated community in a tranquil environment offering elegantly styled two or three and a three bedroom plus a DSQ apartment. Combining tasteful design and modern amenities, contact us on 0706 155 277 or 0726 205 208. It is the health diary. Oh, wait, not health diary. It is your world. It says that I saw the ad earlier on. This is your world. And this morning, we are actually focusing on financial literacy. A lot of gems coming out of this conversation. We're still with um, Esther, Robert, Rosalind, and Dennis, who are giving us also their own scope of uh, life, or rather perspective on life when it comes to finances. And I'm sure a lot of people are walking away with great uh, nuggets out of this conversation. Before we get back to that conversation, hundreds of junior doctors at state-run Malaysian hospitals staged walkouts Monday demanding better conditions as the country faces its worst coronavirus outbreak yet. Now dressed in black and holding signs with slogans including equal pay, equal rights, equal opportunity and we are your future specialists. They protested, protested rather at medical facilities nationwide. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now some 30 men are taking part in the 455th edition of the Old Bridge Diving Competition in Moster in Bosnia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now this prestigious Balkan competition was won this year by Serbian Dragan Melnovic, who won the Swallow Discipline, which consists of diving head down from the arc some 26 meters above the Neretva River. And Dragan says, I didn't, expect to, I didn't expect to win at all. I made those two best high dives and the jury decided I won. I dedicate this title to my CT usage. Now, Lorenz uh, Listo says, multiple winner of the competition, jumping from the old bridge one day was always the dream of all of us. We used to swim here in the Neretva and start high diving from smaller heights one meter then two three five now as the children grow up they compete with each other <laughs> In an unprecedented economic and social crisis, now Giovanni says the idea came by chance. I was browsing the Guinness website and discovered that there is a painter from Uruguay who drew the flag of his country on an area of 168 square meters. I am proud of what I do despite everything the country is going through. I am trying to introduce something beautiful. Back to our conversation on financial literacy and uh, a lot of your feedback coming through. Do we have some of that that we can sample before we delve back into the conversation? All right. So what is it that you did with your first income or your first salary? Moses Moy says, pizza wa yani. I was not even believing. Always treasure this and God has surely blessed us. More is coming. Well, amen to that, James. Gaki An says, makeki na madhuiti maingi. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Paul Kamau says, bought a, cut, a carton of ginger biscuit and made sure I ate at least five pieces daily because cooking was a disaster. The life of a bachelor. We hear you. Kennedy Odiambo says, I used it for, I used it to take my mom and dad to hospital. Kennedy, we hear you. Uh, Emmanuel Karyuki says, I did save a fifth of it, then spent a chunk of it with friends and expenses. At least you saved something. Then uh, a ruined man here says, I got robbed somewhere going home from the bank. I remember sitting on top of a long chair at the counter. When the bill came, I remember it was way above the 7,000 shillings that I had. Luckily, I was known at the place where I left, promising to come back and pay after another 30 days. Wow. Paul Lissana, Melso Choir says, First salary belongs to parents. Those who genuinely pray for you to go and get a job, divided it between my mom, dad, and grandma, and I took some to charge. Wow, Melsa. Impressive. Joseph says, Never be west, Molly. Kaweza kuongea tu. Waneza jibu his wali on my behalf. Ni hayo tu kwa sasa. Joseph, loud and clear. Now, DJ Ivan, the governor, says, Mapenzi inge kuwa Champions League. Mimi ninge chujwa tukiwa group stages. <laughs> Clearly, we know where the money went to. Then we have Kibutai who says, For me, I was madly in love and months needs. Uh, months needed household stuff. See, tulikuwa tunajenga kwetu. Let's just see. Character development that ended in premium tears. Oh, 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 oh. Clearly somebody else who made a mistake when it came to the relationship and money. Wangwe Karanja says, wow, my first salary was 4,000 shillings. Used to work in a beauty shop. How I spent it, I don't remember. However, it must have been to support my family. Hashtag umbali tumetoka. Kweli Wangwe. And we can only get better for it. Washira says, what is a salary? How does it look like? How does it taste like? This is a reality because most have never been employed or at least, um, you know, gotten an income of their own. And this is something else that we need to talk about. And that's why a lot more people, especially in the pandemic, have gone into businesses. But then again, even if you are an employer or self-employed, you still need this financial literacy to make it a success. Dennis is a business somewhere in the future for you and do you have the right tools to run one i believe um, a business is somewhere in the future for me not yet clear on what it will be and i have some of the financial tools 
uh, the palm of my hands to really try and get this thing off the ground. And I also am expecting things to, on the ground to be totally different. Mm. So I, I can only hope for the best. Oh. I have to say. All right. So as you're saving, are you saving with this in mind? Yes. Yes, I'm saving with this in mind. Mm -hmm. But also in the meantime, I'm making use of um, circles and money market funds to grow my money before I settle on where I want to put it in terms of business. Ah. So that you know, just sitting in a bank, mm -hmm. just growing as I wait. Okay. To, to get clear on the now that you touched on that, you talked about savings. Now I've heard you talk about suckers, money market. Where else is your money? Uh, first church. I think we, we have to give the, the guy upstairs his due. He, <laughs> he takes care of us uh, yes. down, down here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some in a current account, you know, just to, to keep the, the wheels moving here and there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I, I will say the circles, the money market, and um, save a current account, that's where my money is at the moment. Okay. So also, I'm also a um, low risk person. Mm -hmm. And I'm also very keen on making sure I think through where I put my money before putting it in there. Because like one of the panelists said, when people really see you making money and they see you not sure of what you want to do with your money, then they'll find a reason uh, to use your money. Very so well. Also that, and I'm also wary of that. Okay. Now for you, Roslyn, you have been in business for a minute now. How do you make it work? And when you got into it, were you ready to handle the monies that came with? No, I wasn't ready, um, simply because, um, you know, the first month of business, you're like, there's the income you think you should be getting, and then you're not getting it. So there's mm. money not coming in for a period of time, and you're like, um, you know, what do I do? You feel like time is running out, and, um, you know, that's why I think I, I had pointed that out earlier, that mm. you need to be okay with that time when, um, you know, you look like you're not making it, and yet you're working. So. <laughs> Um, sometimes it's a bit of an internal pressure. You're like, okay, I have some of this money coming in, but uh, you know, it doesn't look like you're quote unquote making it. So, um, you know, for me, that transition then has taken some time, but I'm thankful. And um, I would put it out as an insight that you know, when this when these pressures check in, I think uh, Esther had put it out across quite clearly that is this debt that I'm trying to take for lifestyle or for mm. something that's going to bring in money. Um, one of the things that I had decided is that I wouldn't take debt to unless I really, really needed it, of which I haven't gotten to that point yet. Mm -hmm. But um, thanks to even uh, Robert's classes here on um, you know, managing good debt versus bad debt, um, for me, taking debt is clear. It has to be for something that's going to bring in more money, but not for lifestyle debts. Uh -huh. Very well said. And Robert, perhaps you can walk us through this. When somebody comes and says that they would want to venture into different fields just to, you know, uh, increase their sources of income, what do you advise them to keep in mind? Yeah, so th the first thing is to know that uh, when you look at personal finance uh, as a value chain, uh, it starts with financial planning, then uh, wealth and investment, then you'll have retirement planning, uh, risk management using insurance products. We should also look at finance as a couple for kids, estate administration, uh, debt management. So once you look at them holistically, you should know that the most important parts actually in that value chain are two things, and they are career development and, uh, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So that is where the money will come from. And we tend to forget that. So since we've gotten the job, you forget that to earn more, you need to learn more skills, mm -hmm. uh, set aside some money to go back to school or learn a new skill that is relevant in your industry. I remember in the year 2005, most bankers were learning about computer. So computer literacy was big and you could be declared redundant simply because you didn't have those skills. So you see, if you learn those skills, you're likely to keep your job and keep earning more. And in business, again, you might need to learn new skills. Maybe things have gone digital, so you need to learn those digital skills and be where people are. So if people are online, uh, you have you gotta be there so that you be uh, in a position where you can connect with them. You do your marketing, and you do your sales. Mm -hmm. So I think the most important thing is to understand in your career and uh, business how it works. And I usually say that it's important to understand things from first principles. Yes. Because uh, even for a business, uh, there are five things. But the three most important things when you talk about capital, uh, you can uh, have capital from outside. 
or you can have debt, and you can also have revenue as capital, because revenue can help you grow the business. But I know now people are just focused on uh, this capital that comes from other people. Mm. So we have a fundamental weakness in our society because uh, we are not saving enough uh, to the extent that if you are a parent, you can give your child some money to start a business. Yeah. So for that reason, there will always be that gap. So we have to try to be innovative. So being innovative is to try to use less to achieve more. So I would just say that uh, we really need to understand our career, uh, the ecosystem in which you are working, uh, and where things are headed in that direction, and what can make us different and unique. Mm -hmm. And if you work hard on it uh, consistently, 